Well, welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Over the last couple of weeks, we've had a great time putting together our videos from our Singapore trip, uh, but now it's back to work. One of the things that's coming up is the Open Hardware Summit, and this year I've been lucky enough to get a spot talking about USB vendor IDs and open source hardware. It's something we've dealt with since the beginning here at Dangerous Prototypes. Uh, and today I'm going to do a dry run of the presentation. I'm hoping to get some feedback from you and also to see for myself what my timing looks like and where the presentation can be improved. We only have a 10 minute time slot, so that's uh, real short. But I'll try to put in as much background as I can and try to let people know, uh, you know why it's a problem, what the problem is, and how it fits in with open source. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments and I will give you a preview of my 2012 Open Hardware Summit presentation. USB is the most common connection for small devices these days. And that's not just stuff like mice and keyboards, but also open hardware like Arduinos and the latest Kickstart project. Every one of those devices has to have a unique USB ID. So when you plug it into a computer, it sends that number along with some other information and says, hey, it's me. Do you have a driver for me? Do you recognize me? Do you know what to do with me? And that USB ID consists of two parts. It's four bytes long. The first part is two bytes and that's the vendor ID. In this case we've got the ID of an Arduino. The second part, also two bytes, is the product ID. In this case we've got the Arduino Uno. To get a USB ID you have to be a legitimate corporation and you have to shell out two thousand dollars to the USB implementers forum. That gets you a unique vendor ID that has 65,000 individual product IDs attached to it. You can use these in you know, your firmware, in your projects, in your hardware. 1337 is already taken. We checked. And you can't get a custom vanity ID unless you're Intel, evidently. Now, the reason they let me up here to talk today is because uh, USB and open source don't jive together. When you sign up for that USB ID, you sign a contract that says you won't sublicense it or redistribute it. And that includes redistributing it with open source firmware and software. So that has real world consequences. With, if you build your next great device on the new Arduino Uno, you're going to have to shell out $2,000 to get your own USB ID for the new USB to serial converter chip. Or you'll have to redesign the hardware based on an older version. You know, and $2,000, it doesn't sound like a lot for a big corporation, and it certainly isn't. And it's not even a lot for a moderately well-funded startup. But if you're a, a hackerspace, if you're a forum, if you're some sort of community group, an open source project, or maybe somebody trying to get their first 25 kits out the door, that's a prohibitive cost. It's definitely a barrier to open source, and I believe, you know, open source hardware, and I believe that's why it's an issue that we need to address. So the first thing everybody wants to do is try to make a group buy an ID together and either share it or resell them. Well, the implementers forum has thought of this and it's against their contract. So while you do have 65,000 IDs, you can't really use them however you want. You can use them as allowed by the contract. And in this case, you can't sell or reshare them. Back when they first started issuing USB IDs, there was no contract involved. You gave them $2,000 and they issued you a number and that was the end of the story. And a small Dutch web shop bought an ID and was selling individual IDs uh, to open source projects. And despite the fact that there was no contract prohibiting it, the USB Implementers Forum essentially harassed them into stop doing that. Uh, there was no law to stop them, there, they had no legal grounds for it, but it wasn't worth the civil litigation to continue selling the IDs as a service to the open source community. So in general, you know, there's no way to MacGyver our way around the Implementers Forum's prohibition on you know, reselling and sub-licensing IDs. Another gray area is squatting a range. You know, since the USB implementers forum, they can't reuse a number after a company goes bankrupt or ceases business or after they revoke one like they did to the Dutch web shop, you know, it's possible for open hardware to squat on a range. Um, this is the approach that the OpenMoku smartphone people are using. The company's dissolved, they've transferred all of the property over into an open source foundation, and now the members are reserving IDs on a wiki for open source projects. You know, technically, there's probably no law to prevent it in most places yet, 
but that doesn't mean they're immune to civil litigation. And uh, I didn't call up the implementers forum to see if they had a conflict. I didn't want to uh, be the one to trigger that. Uh, and you know, using a squatted ID, it may be fine for testing in a classroom. It may be fine for working in a hacker space. It may even be fine for releasing you know, some firmware on a personal, personal website. But it's not uh, something you want to do in a project you're selling. And there's no guarantee that eventually you're not going to face civil litigation from the implementers forum or even the original owner of the ID saying, you know, you can't do that. Now, you can give up. And this is the solution suggested to people who want to do Arduino clones, but uh, don't want to buy the vendor ID for the new USB chip. They say, well, you know, just do an older version with the FT232 USB to serial converter chip. And there are some other chips, there's some ARM chips out there with some built-in USB and USB ID functions too. So you can get chips that already have a vendor's ID burned into them permanently. And that's one option. A real legit option is to subsidize, sub-license an ID. Uh, some manufacturers have a little tiny bit of wiggle room to license out uh, their IDs for use with their own chips. So for example, Microchip, the makers of the PIC microcontroller we use in our projects, we sub-license an ID from them when we need it for USB. It has the limitation that it can only be used for 10,000 devices. Then we have to buy our own. But you know, after you get off the ground with 10,000, it's, it's not a big deal to cough up the $2,000 to get your own, as long as you build that into the price structure of your project. Um, FTDI, the makers of the common USB to serial converter chips, will give you an ID from their block uh, so you can customize your device. And they're super simple to deal with. Uh, we filled out a form and sent it, and they gave us a block of, I think, 12. No questions asked, with only the limit that we use it in their own products. Um, you know, I'm afraid... Potential solutions all, you know, are lobbying based. You know, it, 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 somebody has to go out and convince the USB implementers forum that it's in their interest to uh, satisfy the open hardware community, to avoid the bad PR, to get good PR, to find some motivation for them to accommodate open source uh, and our need to work with USB. Um, you know, that means an organization trying to convince them to relax their resale and sub-licensing policy for everyone or perhaps just reserving a testing block and reserving IDs you know, for common things. USB to serial converter, the CDC ACM class, it's really common. There's hundreds of devices out there that use the exact same protocol and are intercompatible, uh, but they all have a unique ID. If there were an ID reserved for them, it would be a lot easier for, say, an open hardware project to make this common type of device and then use that reserved range and sell a project with that. Another thing they could do is legitimize the OpenMoCo approach of having an open source block and releasing it for qualified projects. And maybe if there's a, an organization with lawyers and suits and a fancy building, maybe they have the power to convince the implementers forum that uh, you know, they're legitimate enough to hand out those IDs and that they're a good steward of that. And I think that's something maybe a ragtag group of hackers in a forum or a hackerspace have been lacking up until now. And I just want to suggest that if we wait, we can wait them out. You know, there's only 65,000 USB vendor IDs out there, and much like Internet Protocol version 4, eventually they'll run out of them. And then the marketing department will scramble to figure out what to do, and you know, selling individual IDs, allowing people to cash in on their IDs by sublicensing blocks, this is going to be marketing gold. Uh, but I think that'll take too long and in the meantime we're going to lose too many opportunities to get open hardware out there and to promote innovation and education with open hardware. So I'm hoping that we can find a better solution. Uh, so I hope this presentation has helped you be aware of what the USB ID is and uh, how it plays with interplays with open source and some approaches people have tried in the past and now I think the important thing is to figure out what approach we're going to try for the future. And I, this was a very compressed format presentation, but I will be available afterwards to discuss this more in depth at the poster presentation. Thank you so much. That one actually came in at nine minutes, which is pretty good. And that gives me some room to slow down and to point at things and to pause for a minute here and there. So uh, thank you for watching the first draft of this, this presentation. 
Uh, this won't be the final one, so if you're at the Open Hardware Summit, uh, don't worry, I haven't completely spoiled it for you. Uh, I hope you'll uh, leave some comments if you have them, and we'll be back in the workshop next week with some real heavy-duty hardware stuff. Thanks for watching.